So this is a case of retinal dialysis. Coming to initial presentation. The history of present illness. A 31-year-old man was referred to the university hospital from an outside emergency department after suffering blunt trauma to his right eye. He was not wearing any eye protection when a nail was fired from a nail gun, bounced off a piece of wood and then hit his right eye. He immediately developed eye pain but noted that he had good vision. He then developed floaters one hour later and a black cloud on the temporal side of his vision in his right eye. He continued to have some pain especially when he moved his right eye nasally. Coming to his past ocular history, no previous history of eye trauma, does not wear any glasses or contact lenses, there is no history of eye surgery, ocular medications were prescribed from outside emergency room which includes cyclopentolate hydrochloride 1% 4 times a day in the right eye and prednisolone acetate 1% 4 times a day to the right eye. Past medical history was non-contributory. He was not on any medications and he reports no known drug allergies. Social history is non-contributory. Review of systems is negative except for what was detailed in the history of present illness. Review of system? No. Let's turn our attention to the ocular examination findings. Visual acuity without correction by Snellen was right eye 20 by 80, improving to 20 by 40, minus 2 with pinhole, left eye 20 by 20, minus 3, no improvement with pinhole. Pupil reactions, right pupil, round and regular, pharmacologically dilated, no RAPD by reverse, no reverse RAPD. Left eye 5 mm in dark, 3 mm in light, no RAPD. Slit lamp examination, lids and lashes show ecchymosis and edema of the nasal upper and lower lids on the right side where it was normal on the left side. The conjunctiva and sclera showed 2 plus injection nasally without conjunctival or scleral laceration on the right side and was normal for the left side. The cornea showed inferior endothelial pigment in the right eye where it was normal uh, on the left side. Anterior chamber showed 3 plus pigmented cells in the right eye and was deep. The left anterior chamber was deep and quiet. The iris was normal on both sides, the lens was normal on both sides. Coming to dilated fundus examination. Vitreous 3 plus mixed anterior vitreous cell and mild diffuse vitreous hemorrhage was seen in the right side whereas it was normal in the left eye. The disc was normal on both sides, the macula was normal on both sides, the cup to disc ratio was 0.1 on both sides, the vessels were unremarkable on both sides, the periphery. In the right eye there was a retinal dialysis and evulsion of the vitreous base from 2 o'clock to 4.30 o'clock with commercial retina and subretinal fluid posterior to this area. There were adjacent intraretinal hemorrhages. The periphery was normal in the left eye. So here we have got an image. This is a pseudo color fundus photograph, wide field of the right eye showing mild vitreous hemorrhage, normal appearing nerve and macula and a retinal dialysis in the nasal periphery with adjacent retinal commotio uh, or commotio retina and intra-retinal hemorrhages as you can see over here. And then you have got the standardized echocardiography of the right eye meaning the B-scan ultrasound 
transverse view with nasal quadrant centered at 3 o'clock T3 showed mild to moderate hyperechoic signals in the vitreous cavity hyperechoic which was consistent with vitreous hemorrhage anterior to the equator between 1 o'clock and 4.30 there was enhancement of the vitreous with shallow elevation of the retina extending posterior to the equator. No other areas of retinal detachments were detected. Clinical course. The patient was diagnosed with a traumatic supranasal retinal dialysis with associated regmatogenous retinal detachment of the right eye. A CT scan from the outside hospital was also reviewed which showed no intraocular form body and no orbital fractures. After full discussion of the condition with the patient, he was consented for a scleral buccal procedure in his right eye. Three days later, he underwent the scleral buccal procedure which involved application of cryopexy to encircle the entire area encompassing the retinal dialysis and placement of a number 42 encircling band. The tension of the scleral buccal was adjusted to achieve a mild to moderate buccal height in all quadrants and to ensure that the retinal break was well supported on the buccal. A post, at post-operative day 1, the retina was flat posterior to the scleral buccal, but the far edge of the tear was just elevated off, off the scleral buccal nasally. The decision was made to observe this area of elevation and to have the patient return in 3 days time. At his follow-up appointment, the decision was made to perform laser retinopexy around the edge of the tear where it was elevated off of the buckle. At post-operative week 3, his vision was 20 by 300 which improved to 20 by 70 with pinhole, likely still limited by resolving vitreous hemorrhage. The retina was flat and attached in all areas. So what is the final diagnosis here? It was a retinal dialysis with associated regmatogenous retinal detachment. Coming to the summary of this condition, the epidemiology or etiology. Male to female ratio is of uh, about 2 to 1 and average age is about 28 years, most commonly due to ocular contusion injury little evidence supporting developmental or genetic etiology unilateral but bilateral in 4 to 8 percent of the cases mostly unilateral most common location is the infrotemporal infrotemporal quadrant but supranasal dialysis is more frequently associated with trauma accounts for 8 to 15 percent of all rheumatogenous retinal detachment so the most common location, he says, is actually, uh, if it is caused by trauma, it's supranasal, but overall it is infratemporal. What are the symptoms? The patient might be asymptomatic or may report flashes, floaters, blurred vision, loss of peripheral visual field, or decreased visual acuity. The signs include slit at the ora serrata that makes slit at the ora serrata that opens with scleral depression or more elevated tear with associated retinal detachment. Angle recession, traumatic cataract, vitreous hemorrhage, avulsion of the vitreous base, retinal demarcation lines, retinal cysts and pars plana detachment can also be seen. Coming to treatment or management, Treatment is photocoagulation or cryopexy, pneumatic retinopexy, scleral buckling successful in 87 to 95% of the cases of retinal detachment associated with dialysis.